AI will replace you. I'm sure all of you have heard this statement before, but let's set the record straight. That's not entirely true. The reality we are facing is a bit different. People who are using AI will replace you. In a fast evolving tech world, mastering generative AI is, isn't just beneficial, it's essential. Today, we are diving into the exciting world of generative AI and how you can start your journey in 2024. In the next 15 minutes, I'll guide you through a six months roadmap to mastering generative AI, regardless of your background. In today's world, you don't need a PhD to master AI. Generative AI has revolutionized learning, making it accessible to everyone. Whether you're a complete beginner in AI or working professional such as data scientists, machine learning engineer, deep learning engineer, or any similar role, this learning path will equip you with the skills and knowledge to master generative AI in 2024. Before diving into the roadmap, I've put together a comprehensive guide to help you master AI in 2024, covering everything from fundamental concepts, methodologies to tools and techniques essential for learning. This guide includes links to all the courses you will need to embark on your AI journey. To receive the guide, please drop your email in the comment section below. Alternatively, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn if that's more convenient for you. So the roadmap has divided into three levels. The first level is generative AI user. This is where you will start exploring generative AI, learn about generative AI tools, go concepts around generative AI. So this is for someone who are completely beginners in AI. And the level two is a developer, which consists of two stages. Stage one is idle for someone who has basic or intermediate level of Python. And stage two is idle for someone with good data science knowledge. And level three is an expert level, idle for someone with ML and deep learning expertise. So let's dive into level one, which is generative AI user. So this is the generative user path. This is where you'll use generative AI tools and learn about prompt engineering. So the prerequisite for this path is that you have a basic understanding of generative AI and LLMs. So this step, this path consists of three steps. First step is to learn how to use the Gen AI tools with basic prompting. And then you start learning prompt engineering in theory. And step three is actually learn prompt engineering techniques. For those who are clueless about what is generative AI, let's start understanding what is generative AI. Generative AI is artificial intelligence capable of generating text, images, or other data using generative AI models, often in response to prompts. Generative AI model learns the patterns and structure of their input training data and then generate new data that has similar characteristics. Now let's also talk about some benefits of generative AI, right? So it can be applied in multiple use cases and industries. For example, it accelerates research. Generative AI can explore and analyze complex data in new ways. So researchers can discover new trends and patterns that may not be otherwise apparent. It can be used to enhance customer experience. Generative AI can respond naturally to human conversations and serve as a tool for customer service and personalization of customer workflows. So for you, in order to start understanding these multiple use cases, you have to start using these tools. Now the step one in the user path journey is to explore the Gen AI tools. There's no better way to learn generative AI than experiencing it. The first persona is to become a user of the Gen AI tools. Now sign up and create an account in any of the generative AI tools and gain hands-on experience. Get familiar with the Gen AI tools, understand what they are, know their capabilities and features and experiment with them. Explore chat GPT, BARD, Midjourney, Dali2, Stable Diffusion. Start writing simple prompts. Your prompts in the beginning could be in a very natural language, just asking the AI model what you want in plain English. After gaining hands-on experience with the Gen AI tools, the second step is to improve our knowledge and learn to use the tools better. In, now, the second step in user path journey is actually learning prompt engineering. Now, generative AI tools have a lot of potential which has not been explored yet. We need to learn to apply the right techniques to use them effectively. Most generative AI tools generate responses based on the natural description known as prompt. Prompt writing is an art. We need to learn about prompt engineering in detail to explore generative AI to its full potential. So ex start exploring the best and most effective prompts for using the Gen AI tools. Now there are different prompting methods and techniques. For example, you know, let's understand what is chain of thought. Chain of thought prompting is a technique to enhance complex reasoning capabilities through intermediate reasoning steps. And what is zero shot? Zero shot involves adding the prompt, let's think step by step to the original question to guide LLM through a systematic reasoning response. So once you're familiar with the generative AI tools and prompt engineering, we can start with the level two, that is the developer level. 
Now, the developer stage consists of two parts. Stage one is diving deep into generative AI and uncover core concepts by building the simple LLM apps. Now, this step requires you to have a basic or intermediate level of Python knowledge. Now, for those who do not have Python knowledge, start by learning Python. So I have all the course links to Python in my detailed guide. Please do ch check them out. So the prerequisite is basically you should be able to install Python, setting up an IDE, understand basic syntax, understand what are variables, data types. You should be able to do exception handling, understand what are modules, pip, and build many hands-on projects. So this process, again, as I mentioned, it shouldn't take you more than two to three weeks full time. So once you have basic or intermediate Python level knowledge, so you should be able to start learning core concepts around LLMs. You should be able to understand different AA models. Um, start by exploring what is a text to text model, what are available text to image models, image to video, text to video, and different multimodal AI models. And understand the core architecture around transformers. What does encoding and decoding means? What are the vector and embedding concepts? Start by understanding what is an API, how to use an API. So you should be able to understand model API parameters for our LLMs like temperature settings, tokens, and context length. And then you can explore generative AI APIs which are available like proprietary models like OpenAI, Gemini, DALI, and also other open source models like Mistral and Lama. And a step two is actually learning about LLM tools and frameworks which are available in the market. And then you should, you start building these LLM apps, right? This is how you'll get hands on and this is how you'll understand what is generative AI means. Now that you have good understanding of AI models existing in the market, you start diving deep into the Gen AI tech stack. The Gen AI tech stack comprises three fundamental layers, the application layer, the modal layer, and the infrastructure layer. The application layer includes end-to-end -end apps or third-party APIs that integrate Gen AI models into user-facing products. Now, this is where you see end-to-end -end user-facing B2B or B2C applications, example, like GitHub Copilot or Jasper. And the model layer comprises proprietary APIs like GBD3 or Gemini Ultra or open source models like Mistral or Llama. Now this layer also requires hosting solution for deployment. And you have some model hubs like Hugging Face or Replicate for that. And the infrastructure layer encompasses of cloud platforms and computer hardware. So, and this cloud platforms is where you would deploy your AI models, for example, AWS or Azure. And the computer hardware is where you would use GPUs from NVIDIA, TPUs from Google for computing. The next step is to actually understand Gen AI training methods. How do we get the most out of these LLMs? Now, there are four methods which most of the companies use in order to uh, train their AI models with their own proprietary data. The first one is prompt engineering with context. This basically is the most cost effective method. This is basically the most cost effective method involves crafting detailed prompts with contextual examples to guide the model's output. You don't have to train with your proprietary data here. The second popular method is retrieval augmented generation. This is where this is what most of the companies are using today. RAG addresses the limitation of LLMs to generate answers based solely on their training data by augmenting prompts with external data. This is where companies train the LLMs with their own proprietary data. So this technique you would be using different vector database tools and you will understand how to, you know, integrate relevant data chunks into the prompt. You'll understand how to enhance the model re relevance and reduce risks popular path and the third method is PEF this PEF stands for parameter efficient fine-tuning this is a technique that aims to fine-tune which model like GBD3 to a specific task or a domain and this requires a lot of computing and this requires a lot of data from the organization this is where you'll be using fine-tuning and the last one is full fine-tuning this is not a very common approach followed by companies this basically means training an nlm from scratch it's a very uncommon approach as it requires a massive amount of high quality data and immense computing power which most companies lack however you know for example bloomberg did it with its vast repository of financial data spanning over 40 years it created bloomberg gpt using full fine tuning a finance specific llm 
so once you're on uh, so once you're aware of the generative ai models and the tech stack start by understanding the challenges around generative ai so often these ai models are often known to hallucinate especially in terms of academic references or citations and most of the time these models are not been trained on the newest information so has limited knowledge of current information and on the current world sometimes it does not have equal knowledge of all topics for example it has more of stem topics than humanities topic or it does not cite so or otherwise indicate what in training data has led to that response for example as with search results results might be critically evaluated for bias or you cannot make future prediction lacks of creativity or out of box thinking so i'll start by understanding these challenges around generative ai so the last stage in the developer phase 1 is to actually start building an llm based application you won't be able to understand all the tools and frames and what generative ai potential without getting your hands dirty so this is where you should actually start building to build a basic llm based application you don't need to be an expert at coding as i mentioned in the beginning you just need a basic or intermediate level of python which is good enough to start if you are a completely beginner and have no coding experience start building your custom gmd by open ai or build chatbots with no code tools start building a simple use case like a text summarization app or a rag chatbot build ai agents for example autogen by microsoft voids and ui to build ai agents with no coding there are many tools like that which help you understand generative ai potential by actually building now i have created all these tutorials for beginners in generative ai here you'll find all the examples of no code tools if you want to build an llm based application using code or different ai models you'll find that as well so start by actually going through these tutorials and start building now let's jump into level 2 the goal is to become an expert in machine learning and deep learning but there are some prerequisites before starting with machine learning and deep learning feel free to skip the prerequisite if you already comfortable so you need to have a good understanding of probability mathematics and statistic concepts in probability you should know what is a conditional probability or a bias theorem etc like so and you need to have good understanding of linear algebra concepts like vectors matrices and systems of linear equations and you need to have a good knowledge of calculus concepts like gradients derivatives and partial derivatives and lastly you need to have hands on experience with python programming language so once you have a good understanding of the foundational mathematics and statistics you will then be able to wade through understanding the machine learning and deep learning algorithms as it all is based on mathematics now let's look into what you need to learn in machine learning right as a machine learning engineer you'll always work with algorithms they are instructions to tell a computer what to do therefore you need to understand those instructions there are four different types of machine learning algorithms supervised learning unsupervised learning semi supervised and reinforcement learning during this phase it's also important to learn about the basics of machine learning algorithms the task at hand is it a classification task and if so which algorithm would be the best is it supervised unsupervised learning through this you will see the connection between the fundamentals and the machine learning algorithms so here are some popular machine learning algorithms that you'll frequently work with linear regression logistic regression decision trees random forest support vector machine so as a machine learning engineer you'll spend a lot of your time building algorithms and application therefore you need to understand all the algorithms that will help you build this so you have mastered the fundamentals machine learning algorithms and libraries the next step is to take all that knowledge and skill and apply it to real world cases this not only tests your skills and presents you with your strengths and weaknesses in the field but it also helps you to add to your portfolio so here are a list of machine learning projects for beginners so all you have to do is go to kaggle and practice all these projects and get hands on try using different data sets apply all types of algorithms this will set your foundations right and help you in the next stage and the next step is to learn ml ops ml ops encompasses everything from data pipeline to model production a majority of enterprises deploy ml ops principles across the following you need to understand exploratory data analysis data prep and feature engineering what is model training and tuning model inference and serving model monitoring and automated model retrain and please learn deployment to host your machine learning models with a powerful backend you will need to learn frameworks like django or flask 
uh, you know, Streamlit and Fast API are getting very popular in 2023 and four as well with a lot of companies using them for data science projects and machine learning web apps. And also please understand what is Docker and Kubernetes. They can be a great help if you want to ship and deploy your models quickly. So I would suggest to get familiar with Streamlit. Streamlit is worthy of looking into if you wish to build custom web apps using Python for machine learning and data science projects. Now that you have good understanding of machine learning, let's look into deep learning. So in deep learning, you need to have good understanding of deep learning architectures like multi-layer perception, recurrent neural networks, long short-term memory models, and CNNs. And you need to have hands-on experience with at least one of the deep learning frameworks like Keras, TensorFlow, PyTorch, or FastAI. You, need to, you should be able to train deep learning models using any of the deep learning frameworks mentioned above, for example. For example, train multi-layer perception on the tabular data sets or like build RNNs and CNNs for unstructured data like text and image. So let's have a closer look into the deep learning frameworks, right? So let's have a look into most popular deep learning algorithms. After machine learning algorithms, you need to learn deep learning algorithms. Here are the most popular algorithms. Artificial neural networks, CNNs, RNNs, long short term memory networks. Once you have learned all these algorithms, you should learn how to select a problem, choose an appropriate algorithm for your problem, create a model with one or more algorithms, optimize your model for the best accuracy. And that's what you should be learning from end to end. And you should be well versed with uh, one of the frameworks from deep learning. So these are the most popular frameworks of deep learning, TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, Keras. So for example, TensorFlow is the most widely used framework in machine learning and deep learning. It's an open source software library. It's used for numerical computation using the data flow graph. So I would recommend for the beginners to start with TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn as well. It's built on top of existing libraries like NumPy, SciPy, and Matplotlib. It has started as a Google Summer of Code and now has 23,000 GitHub commits. If you are an expert in machine learning and deep learning, it's time to reach that expertise level in generative AI. So there are two parts over here. You can either choose NLP, that is natural language processing or computer vision. So if you choose NLP as your area of focus, so the following learning part will guide you to the mastery of generative models for NLP. For example, you, can dis you should be able to discover the power of LLMs, the foundation models of NLP, learn about popular LLMs like Transformers, BERT, GBD 3.5, Palm 2, and many more. Understand how these large language models for downstream tasks like fine tuning and in context learning, zero shot, one sort, few shot learnings. Uncover the best practices for training LLMs, including challenging, including challenges, scaling loss, and efficient training mechanisms like parallel and distributed architectures. Learn how to pre-train LLMs on your domain-specific data. So all of these tasks will help you succeed in the LLP domain. Now, if you choose to delve into computer vision, this learning path will guide you in mastering generating models for computer vision. You should learn about foundation models in computer visions like diffusion models and their different types. Understand how fine-tuned diffusion models for downstream use cases. Learn about stable diffusion models including model architecture and training processes. Learn how to fine-tune stable diffusion models on your data sets. Explore Midjourney, DALI2 and many other similar models. So that will help you succeed in the computer vision domain. So that's it for today's comprehensive roadmap on how to start learning generative AI in 2024. I know it's a lot of information to take in, but remember, learning AI is a journey and continuous learning is the key. So feel, don't worry if you feel overwhelmed or think you can't master everything in just six months. The important thing is to start somewhere and keep pushing forward. As you gain more experience and knowledge, the rest will fall into place. So if you would like to access the full guide containing all the links to the courses and a step-by-step -step process for learning AI in 2024, drop your email in the comment section below. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more AI tutorials and updates. I'll be here to support every step of the way on your AI journey. Let's dive into the exciting world of generative AI together and stay ahead of the curve. See you in the next video. Thank you.